because these patients are on so many medications and palliative medicine, and the clinical picture is always changing. So their organ function changes, um, they have low protein stores sometimes, which affects the way drugs interact, um, and many patients have different distributions of enzymes. So all of these drugs interacting with kind of their past pathophysiological environment can be a challenge in the palliative care setting. Although CYP and the cytochrome enzymes are touted as a huge player in drug interactions, in palliative care settings it hasn't proven to be um, as big of a player. A lot of the major drug interactions that you worry about in clinical practice, um, although CYP can't be ignored, um, that have really more to do with drugs that are histamine based, um, that are dopamine based like your antipsychotics, um, drugs that affect um, anticholinergic and cholinergic receptors, um, anti-muscarinic effects, and um, those are the drugs that you are really worried about with patients and looking at their medications. And really, although there's many drugs that interact that we still have to use, we don't have a ton of alternatives um, in symptom management, end-of-life care, so you may cho still ultimately choose to use these medications. Um, I think the most important thing is just getting a management and a monitoring strategy so that when you decide to use drugs that interact, knowing what to look for, um, what things to assess and help the patient monitor for um, are you know, a really smart way to handle the drug interaction. So uh, being aware of them, um, you may ultimately decide to use these medications and then getting a really good plan to take care of that patient is um, kind of what we really talked about. I think there's a couple favorites in there. Um, one maybe that comes to mind is the fact that the drugs used for antiemetics that are you know bind at different receptors. People love using Phenergan. Um, you see it used all over the place, but Phenergan is actually mostly histaminic when you look at how it's bind how it binds to receptors. So if you don't give Benadryl, if you wouldn't give Benadryl for nausea to a patient, which you would never do, um, then you shouldn't be giving Phenergan. And drugs like Compazine that act at the dopamine receptor are a little bit better um, as far as opioid induced nausea.